Okay, hello friends. Uh, so today Deepika is with us, and this is part two of our session. Uh, earlier uh, we have covered close to twenty-five questions in part one, and let's see how many questions we can cover today. So uh, if you are watching this uh, video first time, uh, just for you guys uh, reference, uh, she has cleared five interviews in the past: Infosys, SCL, Capgemini, Accenture, and ITC Infotech. and we are covering all the common questions uh, out of all these four five different companies and couple of more which she has already given so the idea is uh, you will uh, get a lot of questions which are very commonly asked questions so you can also prepare them and these are very uh, repetitive kind of questions i have seen these questions in lot of interviews and there's a reason we are having all these questions uh, in this particular series so this is part 2 uh maybe we have part 3 or part 4 i don't know because we have lot many questions uh, uh, so so let's start it uh, without any delay and friends a small request if you are coming first time please hit subscribe you can browse you can see couple of uh, uh, different videos and if you like it please subscribe and if you like this particular session uh, whatever the value outcome if you can get anything out of this session please hit a like your one like is a big motivation for us and we will keep doing this thing repeatedly in the future as well so on this note uh, welcome deepika and thanks again for your time today deepika thank you sunan okay so shall we start deepika yes uh, sunan we can start okay okay, okay. so uh, for this part 2 uh, the very first question is what is spike and uh, how you, as a scrum master you will see the need of spike in a team uh yes uh, this is the common question like which i have uh, faced in couple of uh, interviews like they wanted to know what exactly spike means like we know whenever we are trying to implement anything we we'll have like a concept like proof of concept we'll be selecting a few users in our uat and we'll be uh, testing so likewise so in uh, scrum also like if any uh, like if team is not aware of any technology or like if they are not uh clear with any requirements or any uncertainties in that kind uh, in that situation we can tell that spike come into picture so it is nothing but it is a uh, like a special type of user story so that uh, for which team is finding uh, like difficulty to estimate maybe for various reason like uh, the user story cannot be it will not be meeting the invest criteria or it might contain some technical risk or like maybe team want to explore or they want to investigate something and uh, based on that analysis they want to uh, come to a conclusion so all these things uh, i can tell uh, like it refers to spike so basically we know like uh, in terms of technical also like we have a spike and also functionality based also they can be the spike can be raised so when i say technical spike like how it is evaluated is like <clears throat> sorry it will like uh, be important for when the team is uh, like uh, encountering any new technology which they are not aware of so at that of point of time they want uh, time like to do some experiments and uh, so that uh, like based on that prototype so they'll get some uh, confidence so using that technical approach they can proceed and they can uh, come to an uh, con like conclusion so it will basically be reducing the waste also and it will like this spike is not a uh, any uh, i can say it is not uh, something bad thing so it is like a platform that it, it will give a team to improve their selves based on their understanding or their thinking and it will try to help us to mitigate the risk uh, so that it will be helpful for planning in the upcoming uh, uh, like pbi complexity and all we can uh, consider those approach so as a scrum master like when these spikes are arise what i try to do is like i will try to collaborate with the team and i will encourage them so that uh, they understand the requirement clearly from all perspective and uh, once they are able to analyze or based on the research or the experiments what they have done so we will try to reestimate that user story so according to that uh, by doing this uh, activity like it will be bring the teams like transparency will be increased so that i will also ensure that um, so if there is any uh, investigations or analysis it doesn't mean that we have to take uh, all uh, sprint duration like whether it is two weeks or three weeks in a depends on organization so it doesn't mean that we completely occupy with uh, two weeks or three weeks but it is like we have to ensure like by approximately minimum two to three days we have to uh, 
try to investigate whatever the things we have to find it. And uh, so as a, as a Scrum Master, it is my responsibility. So team is not spending more time on this data analysis or like learning new technologies or implementing. So I will ensure because it will in directly be impacting our team velocity. So keeping all these points, so I would like to say uh, Spike is positive in terms of increasing team's transparency or it will help team to think more and uh, they can bring like new changes with the experiments and all. Like when there is any uncertainties or anything like that, so team can work on it and they can uh, re -est like estimate that user score. So this is my point of view regarding Spike, uh, Sunan. Okay, thanks uh, Deepika for that uh, explanation. Okay, uh, shall we move on to the second one? Uh, yes, Sunan. We have a lot of, so we have to cover a little bit first. Okay, thank you Deepika. Yes, sure. Okay, so uh, other one is on uh, scope creep. So if you heard this term scope creep, normally we are not using this in um, uh, agile projects, but yeah, sometimes uh, people ask in interviews. So if you know this term, what is scope creep? And as a scrum master, uh, how you can uh, avoid or how you can help your team to mitigate that, that will be a wonderful uh, to know. Yes, Asman. So basically like scope, we know like when we are define any scope, it will be in terms of product or it will be in terms of project. So in terms of product scope, if I have to explain like, then it can be a extent like what product, what uh, that project will produce. Like uh, if from our project point of view, if I am delivering, like if I'm building any product, so what is that project scope, uh, product scope is uh, referring to? I have to understand that like uh, based on that product, what is that, that I am delivering to the customer. So that is, my, I can state that as product scope. But project scope is like, what are the works or the tasks which we will be picking up so that uh, we, can, we are able to deliver and uh, produce it. So I can define that as the project scope. So when I come to say like, uh, what is scope creep? So it is like, uh, I have to explain like why it is arising. So we will be committing in our sprint planning meeting, like we will be picking so-and-so user stories in that particular uh, two weeks duration of time. But there are chances like uh, when PO is coming and uh, requesting for any additional changes, and uh, like, like they may, uh, there may be the scenarios where you want to add a uh, new stories or at that point of time, how as a scrum master I have to react. So because change accepting is one of the agile uh, way of like uh, concept. So we can't deny to the request because keeping the business value is also in mind. I can say like, uh, we have to try to find a way like whether uh, we can accept that change or not. So I can tell scope creep is nothing but like when we are trying to add any additional features in terms of it can be like functions or any requirement or like when if there is any work that is not authorized like beyond the agreed uh, uh, scope, like if it is not in our scope of task, so I can tell like um, scope creep will be arised at that point of time. So there can be various reasons like uh, during our prioritization, if uh, we are not prioritizing our backlog in an efficient way. So like uh, it, will, it can create a scope creep when we are picking that user stories uh, in our sprint. And also like there can be a lot of uh, other issues like uh, maybe because of our assumptions and there is no proper analysis or like from uh, the management, we have any other uh, suggestions based on the sprint stories, what we have picked up. So there can be various reasons for this scope creep. And like as a scrum master, like um, I have to try to like work with PO and team so that uh, we re-audit the backlog. And so, and like we have to work on the metrics, like how this uh, scope creep will, uh, like what is the advantage and disadvantage we have to understand. So just because uh, PO is coming and like asking for any change, we cannot uh, face it. We have to think like from team perspective, whether team is able to uh, facilitate and like in terms of decom, like uh, the prior, like uh, any user story can be reprioritized and they can, it can be moved back to the uh, product backlog. So that, like that, any alternative uh, ways we have to think. So we can measure this uh, scope creep, like um, scope creep percentage, it can be measured like, any additional stories or stories which we have uh, removed so that we can compare with our committed story points for that particular uh, sprint duration. And I can say like uh, scope creep, scope creep uh, percentage is equal to like um, 
any like added or the removed story points divided by the committed uh, story points. If you multiply with 100, then you can measure the scope grade. So this is uh, my point of uh, view. So I think like whenever we are doing the sprint planning meeting, so we need to have a planned scope. So if anything that is uh, altering can lead to the scope creep. So any like any it will affect about uh, stability uh, like uh, the sprint activities and also we need to ensure like there is no it will not result into the spillover of the story so that uh, team need not work repeatedly on any other uh, functionality. So we need to ensure. All this is uh, taken care um, as a scrum master. Okay, thanks a lot, Deepika, for that. Okay, okay. So, shall we move to the next one? Uh, yes, sir. Sunan. Okay. So, uh, next one is on uh, story slicing. So, uh, how as a team we should do a story slicing, and if you know some techniques or anything about story slicing, please share uh, those views with us, Deepika. Uh, yes, sir, Sunanda. Like we need to understand why we have to like uh, slice our stories, use the stories based on that. We can have the various techniques. Like there are various factors why we have to slice. Slicing it means that you have to break down the requirements into like uh, the smaller or the manageable manageable uh, functional units so that we can deliver value to some uh, requirements like to the user. So it can be like uh, you have like improved workflow that will produce the progressive results uh, so that it will help you to mitigate uh, any sort of risk or uh, if you're failing to deliver to the commitment. So uh, like uh, user stories needs to be uh, sliced, like we have various techniques. So we have to understand uh, like uh, uh, vertical slicing is there, horizontal slicing is there. So in our project, like we prefer for vertical slicing. So it will allow you to um, cut across the multiple architectural uh, layers to deliver the meaningful value to the user stories. So when I say like uh, target slicing, so how you, in terms of story, so how many days like it is taking or in terms of task, how many hours. So in term like before committing uh, any user uh, story points, you need to see like how much uh, time it is taking like in per hour. So like if the story is big and if it is not meeting the invest criteria or it is not it is depending on anything and which is impacting that we are not able to deliver or uh, facilitate that user stories so those things we have to keep into consideration so first thing is like we need to ensure any story any requirement what we are picking so it should meet the invest criteria this is i can tell this is one of the entry uh, criteria i can mean in terms of definition of ready also sorry definition of ready so there are certain checklist which um, team will be referring so the user story should meet the image criteria and along with that it should be understandable and also it should have the acceptance criteria properly so if i can say uh, like user stories with a bad acceptance criteria or anything like that it it will not like team will be facing the challenges so there can be any uh, technical issues which is arising because of uh, this uh, user stories complexity. So user stories, user story should be simple as enough and it should meet. So I can take that it should like minimal viable product. I can tell uh, if I have to say, like it should have the most basic like user interface. So if user interface is complex or if uh, like in user interface, if you are missing some components, then it will not add any value for our uh, slicing and all. So basically we have to break down the test scenarios or the test cases like we have to have clear acceptance criteria and maybe in terms of roles also like based on from the administrator perspective we need that application i can say like uh, we have our, uh, our uh, shopping uh, like applications like online applications where we will we will be using so based on role like as a user i will try to place an order and do it and uh, we'll do the payments but uh, from the like uh, i can say from the opposite end they will be using the application to keep track of all the requests that are placed or like this so when i say story slicing so we have to deliver a value when uh, we are like uh, picking up that user story in the sprint so slicing is very important when the story is uh, having so story is bigger in size or when it is complexities uh, in like very big uh, like any technical issues or is this enough so at that point of time we have to break down the stories uh, using the techniques which is like uh, suitable for our project 
So there is various technique uh, in the like system. So we can see based on the workflows, how it is uh, conducted and like from the interface more uh, methods. So what are the things like, what is the effort? Like if there is any re repeated effort needed by that uh, like requirement. So keeping all these uh, things into consideration, we have to split the stories accordingly and uh, proceed with that requirement, I can say it's none. Okay, uh, thanks a lot uh, for that uh, Deepika. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. And next question is on estimate. So how you estimate your user stories and uh, are you mapping your uh, user stories with story points and tasks with hours? Okay. So like before moving to this question, like uh, this is the basic thing we have to understand, like what is a user story and what is the purpose of it? So I can see like a user story, I can tell it is a smallest unit of work. So as an uh, like user, what I want, like for example, if I'm taking uh, online mobile banking app, so why I need to log into that uh, mobile app? For what reason? So I will need that mobile app so that uh, I can perform online transactions or like that. So as a user, what is that I need from that app? So that will give the clear picture on the user story. So I can say there should be enough details to move like uh, from the story from to do to done. This is like indicating if a story is well, uh, like it is, it should be prioritized and it should be well defined for us to proceed for that. Sorry for that uh, disturbance. And uh, like uh, I will pick few user stories, uh, like uh, for keeping like banking application, mobile app in uh, into picture now. So I will tell how the user story should be, how this user story should be written, like who writes. The, the follow-up question when it comes to user story is like, I have been asked who writes this user story central. So when uh, we understand what is user story, and uh, like uh, moving with the follow up question, I will say like basically that product owners will be interacting with the business team and they'll be getting all the requirements from them and they will be having this product backlog created and uh, all these user stories will be there present in that uh, backlog items. So when I say as a like a user, when I log into this uh, banking application, banking app, what are the things uh, it will be picked up? So like um, login feature is required for me. And also there will be various components. So banking component will be the transfer and how to make the payments or if there will be a loan section also. So for each uh, comp like uh, tabs or uh, like whatever uh, feature we are using, so we can write user stories for that uh, particular uh, application I can say. So as a bank user, like I need to ensure like transaction is processed. So what is that? How the notification will be generated? Who should receive the notification? So keeping these things. So if we have to write the user stories, we'll get an uh, idea like uh, what are all the things we can uh, consider like three Cs. I can say it's like, uh, what is that in the card? Like it should give a short description. Uh, I can say like, uh, what is the purpose? Why we have to develop that feature as for login feature, like whether it is a, new user or like it is an existing user, how we can uh, set the username password. So that is one of the user story for login feature. And the acceptance criteria is um, very important, I can say, because this gives like uh, when we are developing any uh, uh, feature. So based on this acceptance criteria, if we are proceeding, it is always um, like uh, advised. And also like the conversation, uh, three Cs, uh, that is the last one where it will help to uh, like collaborate with the team and how to proceed and other things. Like as a user, like I have to log into the mobile app and I can enter like the desired amount. So all these things we have to interact like the requirements when it comes from PO. So like when as a team, when we are working, we have to like be specific what we are requirement we are picking for that um, particular string. So those user stories, we have to estimate accordingly. So there are various techniques how we are doing. And the one that thing is like, um, we are using story points as a metric to measure our user stories. So considering all the uh, user stories, what I have listed a uh, few minutes back, like login feature or transfer, you know, payment, loan transfer or banking. So based on this, 
so we'll have to see this um, consider the size of the story and which is like uh, the story like keeping that as a reference story we can uh, estimate the other story so like keeping that reference story giving the story points to that uh, reference story which will help us to uh, like uh, provide the other estimation for other stories so for example login feature is straight and simple so it is not uh, like having much complexities so i can tell that uh, this login feature might take uh, two story points for that particular screen so keeping like this uh, login feature as a reference story so other uh, features like transfer or payment or loan so we can uh, uh, like estimate the other stories uh, using this fibonacci sequence so, so fibonacci sequence we know it is like the numerical value uh, it will like uh, adding the uh, sum of the previous two digits so basically team will be using this fibonacci sequence and also like they have this planning poker game where each uh, scrum team members will be given a cards and uh, what they do is like when there is any requirement and uh, during the discussion of this estimation and all so they'll pick up the card as per their like uh, understanding what is the estimation they are providing and if uh, like based on the discussions like if anyone is giving lowest value they'll have to uh, justify why they are giving uh, that value or else if there is any person in the team they are giving the highest value so like this if uh, team has to come to common agreement uh, whether it is in terms of story points like it, it doesn't mean that i will tell to and some other person in the team will tell as 5 or 6 so team should come to common agreement so until then this uh, planning poker game will be repeated like the iteration will be uh, carry forwarded so these are the techniques uh, which we follow in our uh, team sunan okay so friends uh, just for your information uh, we have covered three questions in this Uh, Deepika knowingly or unknowingly told us the uh, answer of three different questions. So, what is um, estimate? How you estimate your user story? That's the very first question. And then, uh, what is planning poker? And uh, why do we use Fibonacci sequences for estimation? That's the other question. And the third question is uh, who creates user story? Whether it's a scrum master or the product owner, or it will be a team who is involved in the process. So, she has covered all these three questions uh, in the in this one particular given answer. Okay, Deepika. So let's move on uh, quickly. Uh, so, which technique you use for prioritizing product backlog? Yeah, this uh, techniques like we have various technique like affinity analysis, Moscow technique, or uh, Cano analysis, uh, analysis and uh, ranking rally. So each uh, techniques are uh, the concept or the process. What we follow is same, but uh, like in affinity analysis, analysis we use the terms like I, highest, low, lowest, and medium. So these are the terms which we are using to uh, prioritize our product backlog. So why we are doing this product backlog prioritization because it will help us for uh, like it based on that priority we can pick or move the items to our sprint backlog. Uh, so all these things will be taken care. well in advance so that uh, before moving to the execution of a sprint or in like performing the sprint for uh, sprint life cycle so we have to have the prioritized uh, backlog so we have to use like the technique what in our team we follow is the high. whether that feature is need to be delivered to the stakeholders or the customer with a high priority so we are picking that uh, user stories and uh, it, it it is not like we are going in the order according to the product backlog we have uh, 10 or 15 items in product backlog we are not following the numerical order uh, what is there in the product backlog instead we will be is like a uh, user stories if any user stories needs to be re redefined or anything like if acceptance criteria is not clear or anything like that based on all this uh, like uh, discussions so po will uh, like uh, the product owner will use this uh, techniques so we will be prioritizing our uh, backlog items whether it is medium uh, like a priority or whether it is the least priority so based on the priority we can it will be easy for us to proceed with our sprint okay and uh, just a follow up on this so uh, when we do this product backlog refinement or what's the purpose of this uh, product backlog refinement when yes uh, this product uh, backlog refinement is very important it is not, it is not like uh, our uh, scrum ceremonies so we have uh, scrum ceremonies like sprint planning sprint and uh, sprint uh, daily scrum sprint reviews and sprint retrospectives so this product backlog refinement is not like a event it is like uh, activity 
it is an ongoing activity during our uh, sprint process i can say so the purpose of this activity can be for various reasons so like if the requirement what the product owner might have stated might not be clear to the development team so at that point of time also this activity like the product refinement uh, it will be used as an option uh, to like uh, it will give a platform for the team to understand the like uh, user stories or any requirement if it is not uh, clear so i can say it is not like uh, it will not happen in any sequence of order but it is an ongoing activity where uh, team tries to or like uh, if there is any user stories that is not clear they will try to do it or if there is any uh, estimation if they have planned it like uh, before during sprint planning if they have planned it as four or three and if they want to change that uh, estimation so that can also be done during this uh, product backlog refinement basically like to keep our uh, product backlog clean and updated we will perform this backlog refinement so it is having like various i can say advantages so it will help the team uh, to save their time if we are not having the user stories it meeting our invest criteria if they are not uh, like in a defined format if they are not updated with the appropriate uh, estimations and all so it can lead uh, it, it can uh, like avoid uh, what can, it can lead to various uh, issues so it uh, during during this uh, product backlog refinement i can say that if there is any uncertainties or like uh, technical challenges or dependencies which team is facing i can say as a scrum master this uh, is a place like i can try to overcome or like uh, remove these obstacles also this activity can be used and moreover like i can say this product backlog refinement also will increase our work and uh, work velocity so that uh, like we can workflow the workflow is managed in an organized way so that Uh, there is no outdated items in our product uh, backlog uh, which is not required and all we can filter it out so that it doesn't lead to any uh, misunderstanding i can say like this uh, ongoing though it is not one of the formal event in scrum i can say like this is the important activity which all the teams like uh, scrum team should follow like it maybe it will take the 10% of the team's activity so by doing this it will ensure that product act lack product backlog is uh, not filled with any irrelevant user stories or it will help for the team alignment so that uh, they will all fall out in the sync so that they meet the objective without changing it frequently so that if more also moreover um, if they are getting any things like any uncertainties or any challenges so they can it will also help to as i said uh, story slicing so this activity also helps to uh develop a new user stories based on the uh, newly discovered uh, information such as the feedback of the product or from the feedback from the development team so the, i can say this uh, product backlog refinement is very need, very much needed for the scrum team so like each one of us like based on the uh, roles so like what basically po will expect is like he will try to ensure like if we are building the right product or not so like this uh i like a uh, channel is used to ensure that so developer will be trying to think like uh, you will try to ensure if we are building the product in the right uh, path and as a scrum master we try to like adhere like if all the scrum values or principles i try to facilitate and ensure like all these values are team is following this uh, principles and they are meeting their goals okay a great uh, thank you deepika for that okay so next one is again a very popular question and we have seen n number of times in lot of uh, different interviews so the question is uh, is the scrum master role is a full time or a part time what is your take on that deepika uh, yes we need to understand the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master first so when we understand the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master clearly i think uh, we will uh, get answer to this question uh, you know <laughs> like a proper way. yeah so so, uh, so this question and then there is one more question which i think now it's combined like okay what are the role and responsibility of the scrum master and what are the daily tasks as a scrum master in your project this question okay. and uh, whether the scrum master role is a full time or a part time so if we combine that that will be a one question right typically so uh, yes sir awesome. so like basically we know like who is the scrum master like right? what is the roles of the uh, scrum master in any organization we think like he is a facilitator uh, like uh, he will be trying to lead or uh, like i can say coach or guide the team uh, to uh, implement the scrum values and principles like for their uh, process 
So basically, the Scrum Master will try to remove any impediments, like he will be uh, in terms of dependencies or if there is any technical gap, he will try to remove those. And also, like is a protector for the team uh, in terms of workflow or anything. If there is any disturbances uh, which team is facing, so he will try to overcome these uh, challenges. So I can say Scrum Master, like uh, it is not a part-time role for me. I feel it is it should be a full uh, full time. Uh, why? Because like uh, it is not like only uh, we know that a project manager also will be doing the same process. But as a project manager, he will not be working with the team uh, like he will try to work with team in a different way but the scrum master will try to work uh, in a better like in a close way to the team so that uh, if team is not aware of any if we, if team is facing any issues so he will be there to help uh, help the team in all possible ways to resolve those issues so i can tell like along with this is uh, impediment uh, removal or like obstacle removal there are other activities like a uh, scrum master, like he should also ensure like team is not overloaded. If any one person is not overloaded uh, with the couple of tasks or other, other things also like, uh, because these things are directly or indirectly like related to our velocity in the scrum life cycle and all. But keeping certain factors in mind, I can say like um, uh, when we try to facilitate the scrum event, like uh, daily scrum, you need to like ensure like he is prepared well enough. So without preparations, though we have the standard questions like what went yesterday, what we did yesterday, what we are doing it today, what are the implements. So these are the standard questions in daily scrum, but scrum master need to prepare like if there is any obstacles like or any uh, follow-up questions um, or any concerns that are raised during the daily scrum, you need to work on that. Like there will be action item from him and uh, he will try to resolve those um, uh, issues. So along with this, you will try to ensure like if any task is not unassigned or uh, to any team member, uh, if any user stories is not estimated or if the team is finding any challenges. So you will try to go guide the team and coach the team to overcome all these uh, challenges. And along with that, like once after uh, this, maybe if uh, Scrum Master is not there, there are chances that uh, like a self-organizing team or the mature team can skip a few of the Scrum events. So we then it is no longer like I can't. Uh, what I mean is, if we are not following the Scrum events or Scrum like principles or value, then it I can't term it as a Scrum team. Uh, so it is better like when there is a Scrum master, he will try to ensure like each team member in the team is participating in the Scrum events or what is what is their contributions and uh, like what is the involvement they are having and uh, like uh, it helps to more like. Um, he will also try to look into this burn down chart and like he will be concentrating on the various metrics like burn down chart, how team is performing, like to keep track of the progress, he will ensure. And there will be like various reporting uh, from the reporting point of view, you will have to share various reports to the stakeholders or management. So keeping all this into consideration, I would say like uh, he is not only a facilitator uh, to uh, like a uh, for the, from the scrum ceremonies to handle this scrum ceremonies, it is not only this uh, requirement. And also like uh, there are other uh, issues like um, when the team is not able to meet the timelines or if they're not able to uh, finish the task like to the committed story points. So you will have to invest and you will try to work with the team in a uh, organized way and try to fill that gap. So I think like a scrum master should be a full-time role. Um, from my point of view, Sanan. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Deepika, for that. Okay, so this one is on pretty basic. So what are the three pillars of Scrum and which event uh, will you consider as an inspect and adapt uh, for a Scrum master? Uh, yes, uh, this is like uh, the question which, we, which I was asked during one of my interview, like what are the three pillars? So they also refer, they also use the term like empirical process. So when the questions come as what do you mean by empirical process in Scrum? So it, it means the same, like uh, what are the three pillars? So I can say inspect, adapt, and transparency is the three pillars of the Scrum. So it is not that only uh, daily Scrum we are using uh, to deliver this uh, like uh, inspect, adapt. So all the Scrum ceremonies will have uh, the scope to in inspect, adapt, and transparency, like all the Scrum, including daily Scrum, sprint planning. So there, because when we are uh, having the sprint planning, we have uh, certain 
things what we discuss at that point of time also team will have scope to inspect any new things or how they are adapting so that in a collaborative way we have uh, option to discuss this during our uh, sprint planning meeting and also during daily scrum also like how like how in an efficient way we can carry out what is the thing like if uh, according to the framework like we uh, have a dedicated 15 minutes uh, it is a time boxed event like daily scrum if it is extending so what is the thing why it is delayed uh, causing that delay we can inspect and like we in the upcoming daily scrums we can uh, try to fix that or else like uh, in the sprint retrospective if team is not uh, willing to join because thinking that they have already given the demo or anything like that so it gives chance to inspect in all the scrum events and adapt accordingly so that the team will uh, try to focus on their work so and uh, they are also like open enough and like we have to respect each one's uh, uh, decisions or anything like that so we need to work like uh, the scrum values on scrum principles are followed or not all these are interlinked so i think uh, scrum itself it, i can say it includes uh, three roles three artifacts and five events five values and uh, five sorry three pillars so if you can remember these things i can say like uh, uh, scrum like you can uh, manage to follow the scrum values and principles okay i think uh, that's all for today deepika so okay. friends i will just take two more minutes uh, if you have seen this video till now you have already spent uh, half an hour and i just take your two more minutes uh, because there is an important thing which i just want to convey to everyone so friends uh, a lot of people are asking like how is it possible that people are getting five uh, uh, you know offer letters or six offer letters so, so the thing is, uh, friends, it's not happening in a day. So let's take an example of Deepika, right? So I have seen her notes. She's doing so much hard work from last so many months, I would say, right? She's asking the right set of questions uh, within our group. She, she's doing a lot of hard work. She has full-time job and then kids and this and that. You might have seen some kids are coming in during that call as well, right? <laughs> so she's doing a lot of hard work and that's applicable for all the uh, group members or whatever the videos which you have seen so far. So there is no nothing like a magic formula, magic pill, uh, pills over there, okay? It's totally the dedication, the hard work. Uh, she has prepared a lot of handwritten notes. I have seen that. Uh, so a lot of efforts are there. It's not a rocket science. Nowadays, a lot of uh, opportunities are there for a scrum masters. So if you are not getting uh, uh, interview calls or if you're not able to crack the interview of a scrum master, then there is something which you really need to work on, okay? So a lot of opportunities are available. Market is crazy. N number of uh, openings are there in so many companies nowadays. So that's my, uh, yeah, uh, thing which I just want to share with you all that check, do the introvert, do the inspect and adapt. In, so I have seen, uh, apart from Deepu, I have seen a lot of other people who are uh, making a lot of notes. And uh, what I can suggest you that, okay, you can visit a lot of other videos, this and that, but at the end of the day, buy one or two good books, spend a lot of time with the books. Uh, that's more important because cracking the interview is the easiest part, I can say, guys. Just go and uh, check a lot of videos on career stock. There are many or other uh, channels, you will easily able to crack the interview. But what after that, when you uh, go into a new organization, you will struggle over there. Yeah. So buy some one or two good books. And if you don't know the names of the book, there are uh, in the description, there are a lot of books which are there, which you should have. Start with any one good book. That's more important. So yeah, with this note, uh, let's let's close this session. So thanks a lot, Deepika. So friend, this is part two. I am sure we have part three or maybe part four as well. I don't know as of now, but sure, we, we have many more questions which we need to cover uh, with Deepika. So thanks a lot, Deepika. I know you are busy with so much things are going on parallelly, <laughs> and you have taken your time. So I really appreciate uh, your time and efforts, Deepika. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, Sunand, I have one thing. Like uh, last uh, session, uh, we missed out. Like uh, I was a uh, bit nervous and I could not... Uh, explain on velocity <laughs> topic so That's is perfect. it fine okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. should i proceed yeah. or like is it fine please please please, please please go ahead share share uh, what is that question here yeah yeah definition wise velocity as i said it is like the number of story points burned in that uh, particular sprint 
like um, if it is a newly formed sprint and if the team wants like if the management wants to know like what is the velocity uh, in general like if uh, two or three sprints is passed we, it is easy for us to calculate like if you are adding the total story points that is covered so based on that calculations we can uh, get the velocity easily but if a team is newly formed like uh, they are implementing scrum newly at that point of time how you are uh, calculating velocity is like um, uh, like sunanta has explained that in previous video but i am just trying to rephrase it or uh, like uh, explain it in uh, my terms so i would like uh, first from my, uh, i we have to estimate the product backlog it is very important like we have the uh, product backlog prioritized like how the like uh, story slicing is done all these things like keeping all the techniques in the consideration so once we have the prioritized backlog or anything uh, anything like we will try to estimate that product backlog like, like if we are having or uh, 10 or 20 items in the product backlog we have to estimate like what is the story points that is taking that backlog so after we are uh, estimating the product backlog we have to try to map it in terms of hours like i can say we are identifying the task for us the reference story like one uh, reference story based on one reference story we will get idea like how we can uh, estimate other user stories also so in general like uh, in a few organization like they will consider like one point or like reference story is equal to 8 hours 10 hours or 6.5 6.5 hours why 6.5 hours is like they're considering is uh, they are uh, not considering all these scrum events or other uh, events like activity which is uh, performed by team so they are removing those hours so like i can say one reference story pointer equals to 10 hours or 8 hours keeping that into consideration like all these things will be uh, uh, done during the capacity planning like during our capacity planning we can come to know like what is the capacity of our or team like if it is a five member team and if there is no holidays or if team is like occupied with any other work or if there is any unplanned leave or emergency leave keeping all these things uh, like uh, we will be planning our capacity so this capacity is also needed to calculate our velocity i can say if uh, the capacity of five members uh, for that uh, duration like i can say for one week duration if that uh, capacity is 50 hours and if i am having the, like for my from my project if i'm using one reference story as 10 hours so like 50 divided by 10 like i, I can say 5 so 5 point uh, is my velocity of that particular sprint uh, so this is the way how we calculate uh, our velocity if it is a newly formed uh, team so it doesn't mean that one story pointer is always equals to 10 hours or 10 units like that so it depends on team to team like how they are uh, considering this uh, like keeping the reference story like the baseline story how they are providing their estimation to other stories so all these things are interlinked i would say like based on capacity and this uh, like reference story it will be easy for us to define our velocity okay thanks a lot deepika for that uh, question okay. as well thank you okay so friends so as i always uh, mentioned that uh, we are here just to help you with different questions and whatever the answer which Deepika told, that's her version of answers. Always uh, do your own due diligence, uh, listen properly, take your own notes, uh, add, remove few things which you are uh, aware about or not aware about. So yeah, uh, always do that. And with this note, uh, Deepika, again, uh, let me thank you again one more time for your time Thanks, and uh, uh, efforts. And all the best. Uh, I, I'm sure you are joining, I think, somewhere next week, uh, some new organization. Let's not disclose that. But yeah, <laughs> so all the best for your uh, future journey. And hopefully we will uh, finish our part three and maybe part four as well very soon. So thanks a lot, Deepika. Oh, thank you, Sunan. Thanks, everyone. Okay. And all the best. Happy New Year to everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Sunan.